so what is java right uh, it's an object oriented programming language which produces software for multiple platforms now let's break it down object oriented programming language we we uh, all know there are majorly two categories of programming language one is procedural the other is object oriented so in java everything is an object which uh, uh, you can relate to with the real world they model the real world entities and whatever action you want to perform whatever uh, like uh, 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 actions you want to do the uh, uh, the functions that you want from your particular object or entity or your actors of the application so the objects are going to be the actors of the application through which you will perform each and every action right and when i say produces software for multiple platforms yes once you write your code and you can run it across multiple operating systems multiple platforms right and that is why we say java is platform independent that once you have written your program you can upgrade your os and applications independently and your code will remain unaffected how we will we'll talk about it very shortly uh, so uh, java follows the rule of write once run anywhere uh for example that you write your code on a unix machine and you go ahead and run it on windows and it will just execute perfectly right and java was, was developed by james gosling of sun microsystems in 1995 it was initially uh, named as oak but later on they went ahead and named it java after a very popular coffee so that just a bit of uh, you know the history of java i would say so if you see on the right hand side it is uh, features of java right so let's let's talk about a few of them i say java is simple yes it is simple anyone can uh, understand java and be able to code it once you are clear with the key concepts right so it's very easy to understand and code in java right uh, i covered object oriented when i say that everything in java is uh, through objects we follow a bottoms up approach that once first we talk about our data we talk about uh, uh, the objects and then we move ahead which is unlike the procedural language right where we follow a top down approach right then i say that uh, <clears throat> java is secure so in java there are no pointers if you come from a c++ background you know that pointers gave so much hassle to programmers right uh, and you had to worry about the memory allocation memory deallocation but here java takes care of the memory allocation and the deallocation part and it checks the code before it executes it right so that makes java highly secure platform independent we covered that you know once you have written your code there are no key dependencies no changes required so these are the features which makes java so popular in the industry today it makes it portable as well right uh, uh, like once you have written your program it cannot be read by any other person because it is in the form of byte codes now what are byte codes byte codes i would say is uh, somewhere in between your high level language and your machine language and uh, it is very easy to convert these byte codes into any native language and execute it on any platform right and given these byte codes are not directly readable files even if you are transferring or sharing your java program across the network or to another system the file your code remains secure nobody can read it right uh we also say that java is distributed now uh distributed as a word we all understand right that over the network if there are uh, other classes or other dependencies um uh, we should be able to access them are all the programs as if they are sitting on our own machine right so java gives you a feature uh, of rmi which which is beyond uh, the core java concept so i would just touch upon it and uh, so rmi which makes it very easy for you to uh, access uh, the other dependencies or the other programs uh, across the network right so remote method invocation is the feature of java and that's why we say java is distributed as well and java is dynamic yes now when you execute your program there is lots that is happening at the run time java will make certain calls and uh, certain uh, what do you say gather information only when it requires it for the program to execute 
in the beginning, it may just get a certain amount of information, certain dependencies would be resolved, but a lot of it is done at the runtime, right? And what makes Java high performing is that there are byte codes, as I mentioned, uh, which can be translated into native machine and hence the efficiency of Java programs is very high, right? So these are the features majorly uh, of Java, which makes it so popular. Uh, so are you clear with them? Um, any uh, feature that you want me to discuss again? Are you clear uh, with what we have discussed so far? A uh, few yes would help me uh, move ahead. Yeah, thank you, Nazir. Okay, thank you. Uh, I read uh, from Deepak, uh, there are some critical functional ways in automation. I'm curious to know about them. Yes. So Deepak, uh, automation related uh, topics and frame, uh, frameworks and all would be discussed uh, down the line as we progress. Uh, for uh, this week as well as next, we are majorly focusing on uh, core Java part and the concepts, right? All right, so let's move ahead. And now uh, let's understand the three essential components of uh, Java environment, what really happens in the background when you write your code. So uh, Java development kit, Java runtime environment, and Java virtual machine. These are the three terms and uh, how they are related and what role do they play, let's understand. So JDK, uh, as you can see from the picture, is uh, the bigger uh, entity uh, inside which you have your JRE and your JVM. Now JVM is the abstract machine which is executing your byte codes, which is responsible for reading your program line by line, interpreting it and run, uh, executing it, right? And if there is any help that is required by the JVM, to execute the code in terms of support files or class libraries. It is the JRE, it is your runtime environment which provides these files to the JVM and helps in the implementation of JVM, right? Uh, so this is your environment to run the programs. And uh, <clears throat> if you have JVM on your machine, any Java code that you have, would uh, you will be able to execute it, right? So for, run, for the run part, for the execution part, it is enough to have JVM. But as a developer, if you want to develop programs, you need to have JDK, the entire development kit installed on your machine, which has all the development tools which are required. And uh, a lot. so JDK has the development tools, it has the JRE, and then it has this uh, JVM, which is the machine executing the code in the background, right? So are we clear with, uh, the, with these three terms? Okay, thank you. So let's proceed. Okay, as a part of the prerequisites uh, which were shared with you, you were supposed to install JDK as well as Eclipse on your machines. Now I quickly need a confirmation as to who have not done it. Uh, okay, now this is Jatin has it. No, is this I have it. Okay, Deepak has it. Which version should you choose? Uh, so Nazir, as you, are you asking about JDK? I'll, I'll just quickly go over the link for the ones who have not done it today. And I have done it, but it has got some issues. We'll work on it today. All right, Vandavi. I'll just quickly... Uh, share the link from where you can download and how you can do it. So, uh, yeah, so to download JDK, you will go to this link, which is also shared in the presentation and it will be shared with you post the session as well. But in parallel, for those who have not done it, I would request you to please download JDK as we will be very shortly starting with our lab exercises and we will need the JDK up and running. So as you see, uh, you have this uh, uh, EXE here and based on whatever operating system that uh, you have, you can download the executable and then the uh, installation is pretty straightforward. It is just next, next, next and until you are done, right? 
so this is for the jdk part right uh, and once you have your jdk installed uh, there are certain settings that you need to do on your system to have it up and running so how many of you have been able to set the jdk uh, uh, class path and path what is the difference between ext and zip okay so ext is directly your executable file nazir which you can just download and run it and uh, the jdk would be installed on your machine whereas zip you will have to unzip it and inside that you will have the files that are required that is your executable right so zip is basically a compressed uh, is in compressed format and you need to unzip it on your machine and then go ahead with the installation thank you okay so um, how many of you have been able to uh, set the path and class path and is there a need to repeat these steps i have shared them on the screen as well that you go to the my computer properties and then the advanced system settings and environment variables and then set it to these particular two values because once you have these settings ready class path needs to be set up doing it now okay so let's let's uh, uh wait uh maybe spend couple of minutes uh, checking uh, the settings on our machine and in parallel i'll just cover them so this is uh, when you right click uh, and go on properties uh, in uh, on your my computer you will be able to see this advanced system settings here right uh, right and then inside this you will be able to see this environment variables uh, right once you click on this you will be able to see the these variables here now given i have my path already set in the class path i see these variables here if they are not set you will have to do a new and give the variable name as well as the value and browse from here so now when you browse uh, you need to go to the jdk installation uh, directory and set the path to the bin folder of the jdk uh, directory right i'll just show it to you uh, right it is typically if you have not changed c program files jdk and bin right there there it is this is the path that should be there on your machine uh in the value that you set for the path variable c program files java jdk and then bin folder right and for similarly for class path it should be set to the uh, lib folder the library folder inside your jdk folder so if we can just make uh quickly set these variables and check on our end